now that I've checked that the voltage is still here, I'll do this by sticking my voltmeter and DC voltage. And put it positive on this one here. So I know how much power is actually coming to the to you out of the power module. Uh, power is coming in the power module through here, through this uh, 70 amp circuit breaker, into the power module, and it should be coming out here. So the very right one, a positive. Uh, 24, 24 and a half volts. Next one, 24, 24. So there's definitely voltage coming out, so we're getting voltage here. Now, because we're all getting these intermittent faults for some odd reason, when it, the, the joystick doesn't switch on, we're hitting three, vol three volts. There is, there is a problem there, I don't know, but we need to check all the connections. There could be a possible corrosion on the connection. These look okay. But I still think we should take them off and have a look. Now, let me see if I can take a circuit breaker off. Right, that's it coming off there. So that's the circuit breaker off. That's the spacer. And that's uh, the wee nut that goes on it to, to hold it on here, onto the framework. So what I want to do is I want to take this off, disconnect the power, and check to see the condition of the connection. So when I take it off, I'm hoping, well I hope so, to see corrosion somewhere. And there's none there, there's none on here. Now, the circuit breaker could also be faulty. Inside, water could get in. Oh, they're fine. There's no corrosion, that's in there. So what I can do, if you've not got a spare circuit breaker to find out, is to join these together. A set of mold grips, let me see. Oh, there we go. So join these together with a set of mold grips. The voltmeter here. Positive and negative. Oh, wait, that says here. So we're still getting 24. You can see 24 volts when I'm holding it in here. I put it in. 24 volts here. So as I say, there could be a problem with this, but now that we've joined this together, let's just try the joystick um, and see how we got on. But with all due respect, I think there's somewhere else. It's not it's the circuit breaker that's causing the issue. So let's go and have a look. We'll test the batteries and uh, have a look at the terminal connection on the batteries. Now having removed the batteries and put them on the battery tester, I've got two different battery testers. Uh, the old bat test, the old one. Uh, an M row one uh, and a newer style. It takes uh, 70 amp an hour batteries here. They'll take to test them, you know, an hour, depending on the condition, actually, if not longer, each, an hour each. Um, so I've done them last night before I left the workshop. Now let's see if we can see this properly. This one failed at, there you go, 57%. Usually 60% is a pass, so that's uh, well below. 9.58 volts at the end and this, this particular one will give a computer printout on the battery condition this one here is the older one you've actually feel you've got to press a button to find out what it is so we press uh, the on off button high 52 percent fail so that means both batteries are failed so there is a chance that the batteries are so low in power that um it's no switching the control box on Now that I've tested the battery, or both batteries, there is a tiny bit of corrosion round about some of these connections here. Um, let me take that off. Now we've moved the, the battery terminals. We check to see if any corrosion done there. No corrosion. Check the 
Anderson connectors to see all of them, every single one, that one, that one, this one, now they're fine. You also want to check where it joins here, just to check that uh, it's fine, both of them are fine, the loom's okay, could be a hairline fracture in there, could be, it's a few years old, we know the fuse is working but what we'll do is we'll, we'll check it anyway, now now, so what do you see here? Corrosion. <coughs> ah, well, there you go. That's a problem there. Can you see all that corrosion? Oh, see that side's There's nothing on that. So it's not blown. I must have got water in there at some point. Yeah, that's that's your problem. Right, though, the only way to find out is to put another fuse in here and uh, see what happens. I wouldn't just put a fuse in here and give the customer that back. Let me check the other one. Because, oh, that's really slack. Oh, look, you can see pitting on here. So what we're going to do, just for the purpose, I'm really flimsy, of trying to find out what the issue is, let's put the loom back on. get another fuse and see if the fuse was the issue all the way along just a simple fuse in the mold in here that nobody can see we know voltage is coming through it but it's just poor all we can try and do is clean it up um, let me see if I can get a fuse and right I've got my fuses Let's see what this one is. An 80 amp fuse. So there we go. 80 amp. Very nice and clean. That's how it's supposed to be. You can see the difference there straight away. Let's pop this in here. And so connections together. Even the batteries have been tested. They're no and both fail we should now get something joystick here the joystick's there and we'll just plug it straight in here that's just plugged in this one i'll we'll just check testing it we'll be fine we're no driving it there you go so it's amazing what a fuse can do and we're moving away so the problem at the end of the day is a dirty fuse so it just shows you to check every single connection there is if I would have checked the fuses and the fuses would have been okay the next one I would have gone and had a look in this loom here but uh, that solved the issue